Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Huck. Today I am doing my October wrap-up. So these are all of the books that I read in October. I read 10 books in October and October like the first half of the month was pretty good for me for reading and then the second half of the month was not and the last week of October I read absolutely nothing uh, because in the second half I just got really overwhelmed with work and school because I had like midterms and everything and then I got the flu and you know it's just not the kind of sick where you're like oh I'm homesick and now I have so much time to read it's more like oh I'm sick and now I'll, I only have energy to like stare at the ceiling so that wasn't fun uh, but I'm doing better now uh, but yeah so the end of October was kind of rough anyways Let's talk about the 10 books that I did read in October. So I had two books that I had already started and then just finished at the beginning of October. The first one is The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. This is one that I actually started months ago and then I got about 40% of the way in, put it down because I wasn't hating it but I just like wasn't that invested in it and then in September I finally picked it up again as an audiobook and finished it in October. So this one has been a journey for me. <laughs> um, and this book I initially picked it up because it's on a list of like books about books. It's one that a lot of people talk about if you enjoy books about books which is something I've been trying to read more of recently so I really want to give it a try. It is kind of a historical fiction I guess um, about a young boy who discovers a book that is called The Shadow of the Wind and he absolutely falls in love with it. He reads it and just becomes obsessed and then he wants to read more books by that same author and then finds out there are a couple of mysteries around these books and this author. The author has kind of disappeared, he fell off the grid, no one's sure, like is he even alive anymore? And then there is also this mysterious man who is trying to track down and systematically destroy all of the books by this one author. And so these are kind of the mysteries that we're following of like who was this author and what happened to him and then who is this person that is trying to destroy all of these books and why. Um, and this book I liked it you know the first like third of it maybe <laughs> I enjoyed um, and then around 40% I started to really not be that into it and then I didn't really like the ending. One of the things that I did enjoy about this was the writing. I thought the writing was really well done and I liked that but I was not really invested in any of the characters and it was so slow moving and like I love slow books but this was just too slow for me and I think part of that is because I wasn't invested in the characters and I really didn't like how it ended because this is it's not like a mystery book but there are mystery elements to it and we're following this mystery for so long and what I would want out of a mystery is to like see these characters like put things together and figure things out and like figure out the mystery <laughs> but they didn't figure out anything in this they just like you know bumbled around until they found somebody who could info dump all of the information for them and it just like was not a satisfying ending so overall I really did not enjoy this um I think I initially gave it three stars but now I'm thinking uh now that I'm thinking back on it and all of the things that I didn't like about it I think I should probably uh bump down my rating to two star I don't know um but yeah did not like it the next book that I had started in September and then finished in October was All the Bad Apples by Moira Fowley Doyle this is a standalone uh contemporary fantasy-ish it's it doesn't really have much magic in it there's just like a couple hints of magic to it and this one follows a family that has a curse on it um and in this family our main character is Dina she has two older sisters and one of her sisters goes missing presumed dead and they even have a funeral and everything but Dina does not believe that her sister is actually dead she believes that her sister is actually on a quest to discover the origins of this family curse and how to get rid of it to protect their futures um, and she thinks that her sister is leaving her hints as to how to find her and how to unravel this mystery and this book I did not like as much as the spell book of the lost and found partially because it was less like magical feeling um, but I did like it more than the accident season so this is going to be my like middle book of the three that she has out um, 
And this one I think was really interesting. I think there were elements of it that I really liked. There were some things that like didn't quite work for me in terms of the pacing and the storytelling. I thought the beginning was kind of slow and then once they got into the mystery elements I felt like it moved too quickly and I just like wasn't invested in the characters the way that I would want to be and the way that I was in like her other book Spell Book of the Lost and Found. I just like wasn't that invested in them. But there are a lot of things that I thought that this book did really well, one of which is that it really is about um, like generations of women in this family and we get to learn about like I think three gener three or four generations back of this family and their stories um, and I really enjoyed learning more about these different generations of their families. And one of the things that I thought this also did really well, which I was not expecting going into it, is that this book is really about reproductive rights and the way that um, reproductive rights affect people's lives. And as we're following these generations of women, we see the different ways that each generation of women in this family have been negatively affected by the um, lack of rights that they had in Ireland. And it just, I think that it did really well. It was really interesting and very, it gets very dark and is very like heartbreaking in a lot of places, but I think it, it tackled that really well. Because I think that even though I wasn't as invested in the main character and her like present day storyline, the stories of these generations of women and their um, and the way that reproductive rights in their country have affected their lives was really interesting and also very, as I said, very heartbreaking and you can really see how um, harmful the lack of reproductive rights can be to people's lives and the ramifications it can have through generations of a family. But this is also one I would say that you should look up the content warnings for it because this deals with a lot of things. Some of the ones that I especially remember are incest and rape, suicide, abuse, child abuse, child death. There are a lot of different things. I would say look up a full list of this. I know that the author Moira Fowley Doyle has put lists out about the uh, content warnings for her books. So I'd say check those out because it does like deal with some heavy stuff. And I gave this one 3.5 stars. Next, I listened to the audiobook for Always and Forever Lara Jean by Jenny Han. This is the third and final book in the To All the Boys I Loved Before uh, trilogy. And so this is a contemporary high school romance. There's, you know, a Netflix movie of the first book and I think they're making them for the second and third books too. Um, so it's a very well-known and well-loved series and I just have really been enjoying this trilogy. I read the first two books I think last year um, and really liked them. The third book also really enjoyed. In this one we are still following of course Lara Jean and her boyfriend Peter um, and she is Right now what they're dealing with is that they're both going to be going off to college soon and kind of making decisions about what colleges are they going to, are they going to stay together when they go to college. It's a lot about their kind of anxieties about the future and trying to figure out what is the future of their relationship and how do they make these big life decisions. Um, but yeah, it's just like, it's super cute. It's adorable. It was a book that I was listening to the audiobook and so I was like listening to it when I was like walking places or on the train and commuting and stuff like that and I just would walk around with a giant stupid smile on my face because it's just so cute and wholesome and I love this series. So this was just adorable and it just made me happy after reading some heavier more intense books and I gave it four out of five stars. Next I read another really cute book which was Garden Spells by Sarah Addison Allen. This is kind of like a fabulism-ish book. Um, it takes place in a small North Carolina town. It is following the Waverly family in this town. There are lots of like kind of quirky legacies that people have, but the Waverlys are kind of the quirkiest of them all. Everyone in this family has some kind of like slightly magical power. There's one person who always knows what you're going to need before you need it. So one day she'll just show up and hand you a lighter and then next day like for some reason you suddenly need a lighter and you happen to have one. Um, so it's like little subtle powers like that. We're following two sisters, Claire and Sydney. Claire has stayed in their hometown 
and has, you know, tended their family garden and really stayed in their family home and all of that. Sydney left home as soon as she could and has gone on adventures and then she ended up getting into some trouble. Um, now she has a daughter and she wants to kind of protect her daughter and so in order to do that she goes home back to the small North Carolina town, back to her sister Claire and their uh, childhood home. And it's about these two sisters reconnecting and both of them kind of figuring out what family means, what home means, what safety means, um, and both of them learning their own lessons. It has a little bit of romance in it, but again, it's just like very wholesome romance. It has baking magic and like garden magic. There's an apple tree that will like, that wants you to eat its apples and so it will like throw apples at people. Reading this was like having a Hallmark movie in a book with just a touch of magic to it. It was just really heartwarming and adorable. I gave it four out of five stars. Then after Garden Spells, I went on to read the second book in the Waverly Family duology, I guess it is, um, which is First Frost. And this one is following the same characters nine or ten years later. And so in this one, Sydney's daughter is now in high school. And so we are also following her life. We're still following the sisters and kind of what's going on with them, but we're also following the daughter, Bay. And Bay also has has a little bit of a special power to her, which is kind of like making trouble for her at school and especially with a particular boy that she likes. Um, so this one is especially following her and her uh, romance and kind of trying to figure out what her life is going to be. And this one was also really adorable and cute and just heartwarming. I'm just like using all the same words to describe them. I enjoyed this whole duology. I gave the second one four out of five stars also. I would say that I liked Garden Spells a little bit more than First Frost, so this is a slightly higher four stars than First Frost, but I really enjoyed both of them. Then since I enjoyed the Waverly duology so much, I decided to read more books by this author, so I read two more. The first was The Sugar Queen, and this one I just like didn't enjoy as much. Um, it was following, again, it's I think in a small town, maybe in North Carolina. I think all of her books take place in like small North Carolina towns. But it's following this woman who lives with her aging mother um, and is taking care of her and has kind of kept her life fairly small uh, when a woman that she barely knows shows up in her house and decides to live in her closet uh, because she's hiding from something. But while she's living in her closet, she decides that she's going to fix the main character's life and make her be more bold and take risks and fall in love and all of those kinds of things. Um, so it's about the main character kind of trying to take control of her life and figure out who does she want to be and um, find love and all of that. And this one, I just like wasn't as into it because I was not that into the main character. I felt like we didn't get to know her very well. I also felt like there was there were multiple perspectives so we did hear from her perspective and then sometimes we would hear from other characters perspectives so we got to see her from their eyes and the way that she acted when reading from her perspective versus the impression that other people had of her just like didn't go together and I was just would get very confused and I'm like are these even the same character? I wasn't as invested in the uh, love the main love interest. I didn't really understand why they were interested in each other, why they made sense together. It just like wasn't a romance that I really liked. So I gave this one three out of five stars. I just like didn't really like it as much. Um, the next one that I read was The Peach Keeper and this is um, another one in a small North Carolina town I think um, that is following two main romances uh, and it's following the, our main characters are two women who each have their own little like romances um, and the two of them kind of grew up together but don't really know each other that well but now they are adults and they kind of end up having to get to know each other better as adults now and becoming friends um, and we find out kind of some family secrets and family history. This one Again, didn't love it as much as uh, Garden Spells or First Frost. I did, I was more invested in the romances in this one. Um, 
it just the romances I just enjoyed them more they made more sense to me and I was more invested in them but I did not like it that with one of the romances they used a one of the characters they used a character's sexuality as a plot twist overall I ended up giving this one three stars then I also read a book of poetry which was this beckoning ceaseless beauty by Heidi Rose Robbins and this one definitely had a few poems that I really enjoyed and yeah I might read more from this author I'm not sure yet then I finally read vengeful by V.E. Schwab this is the second book in the villains duology the first book was vicious I loved vicious when I read it last year I think um, and so I've kind of been putting off reading vengeful because I wasn't sure if I was gonna like this one as much and the fact is I did not like this as much um, I didn't dislike it but it was just very mediocre to me um, again we're following Victor and Eli as well as many other characters and so because there are uh, all of these different characters and perspectives. There are lots of different like motives and plot lines that are going on which kind of intersect at different points throughout the story. With this one I think that there was just something about it that wasn't as compelling as Vicious. Once again in this we have a non-linear storytelling, non-linear timeline because we do have a lot of flashbacks as we're finding out more about characters backstories um, and like how they got to where they are now. We find out also more about Victor and Eli and their friendship, their origins. We find out more of Eli's backstory and kind of where he's coming from. His backstory was interesting but also felt a little bit contradictory to what we knew about him from the first book but whatever I liked learning more about his backstory I found that I actually became more invested in the flashbacks and the backstories than the present timeline so I definitely enjoyed that like non-linear storytelling format but one of the dangers of that is that one element of the story whether it's the present timeline or the flashbacks is going to become more interesting and it's really hard to balance and keep both of them interesting. Both of them were decently interesting but I definitely was more interested in the backstories and the flashbacks. I think something else that can be difficult with a lot of flashbacks and a lot of like not like time jumping and a non-linear storytelling and all of that is controlling the amount of information and the amount of perspectives. So I think as much as I enjoy the flashbacks, I think that there were a few too many characters, a few too many perspectives for that to really work well. But I thought that it had a pretty good ending. I liked the ending of this. I just think it took too long to get there. I feel like this book didn't need to be quite as long as it was. But I gave this like 3.5 stars-ish. I wasn't quite sure what to rate it. Um, but yeah, 3.5 is probably decent. And then the last book that I finished in October was Aquacorn Cove by Katie O'Neill. This is a graphic novel. This is the same author that wrote The Tea Dragon Society. Um, so I wanted to read something else by her and so I picked this one up. Um, and this one was also super cute. This actually takes place um, in like a seaside setting and it is about like ocean conservation. But in this, our main character and her dad go to a uh, small seaside town where her aunt lives to help them recover and rebuild from a huge storm that had kind of wiped out a bunch of stuff in their town. Um, and then she finds out about kind of the history of this town and the history of its relationship to the ocean and to the aquacorns and about how they're overfishing and um, stuff like that can negatively impact the ocean and the coral. And so this one was also really cute and I liked that it was about ocean conservation um, and I gave this one four out of five stars. So those are all of the ones that I finished this month. Then I had two DNFs this month. The first one was Princess Ben by Katherine Gilbert Murdoch and the other one was Sweet Black Waves by Christina Perez, which I was actually very disappointed by because this is one that I had really thought I was going to love, but I just was not into it. I'm going to be talking about more of these when I do my fall DNFs video, which will be out, um, I guess, in December after the fall season ends. But that is all for my October wrap-up. Thank you all for watching, and until next time, bye!